The Prince William County School Board is now returning to open session from closed session. Ms. Williams. I don't see I don't see him. Uh, we'll do the move on to the adoption of the closed session consent agenda. Uh, motion is in order. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Jesse. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the closed session agenda as recommended. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman. Yes. I have a second. Ms. Williams. Discussion? Please vote. We'll wait for the vote is seven announce. yes unanimous motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to the closed session certification motions in order. First, Mr. Chairman, Ms. Jesse, I move that pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3712, the closed session of the Prince William County School Board meeting as of October 17, 2018, be certified by adopting the following resolution. Now. Therefore, be it resolved that the Prince William County School Board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meetings requirements were discussed in closed meeting to which this certification resolution applies, and two, only such business, public business matters as were identified in the motion convening a closed meeting were heard and discussed or considered by the school board. Do you have a second? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Ralston. I second. Any discussion? Lost. Please vote. The vote is seven yes, unanimous. Motion passed. This school year, we are kicking off the business of our meetings with a response to community requests to hear more about the good things that Prince William County Public Schools are accomplishing. We are working with the schools and our communications team to spotlight a few of the good news items at these meetings and elsewhere with the term positively PWCS. Tonight's example of positively PWCS comes from to, comes to us from the Coles District. So Mr. Willie Deutsch will introduce our presentation. Mr. Deutsch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tonight I am very proud of how Spark, our education foundation for Prince William County Public Schools, has worked with our community to provide grants for innovative grants in our schools. Students at Coles Elementary School used the grant funding to participate in a global service project called Super Power Hands. Ramona Richardson, a kindergarten teacher, will share how this project has made a difference and is positively PWCS. Thank you all so much. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Waltz. As Mr. Deutsch said, my name is Ramona Richardson, and I am a teacher at Coles Elementary. I also brought with me my administrator, Catherine Forgas. <laughs> so I'd like to talk about a project that Spark has funded for us. This is one of several projects that they have funded for us. And we took a 3D printer and made it into a global service project with uh, some pretty far-reaching results. If we could play the video, please. And as you can see, if you bend your wrist, or in this case, my fingers, the, um, the fingers go down on the hand. So, so this is the prosthetic hand. So we made this for an organization called Enable. See how this, this bends, their, this <coughs> prosthetic hand bends. There is, there are some wires right here that connect to these fingers and, and these are the grip pads. This is, there are some padding here, and also this is the, the strap, so they can insert the, the, the hand. Enable is an online global 
community of volunteers who are using 3D printers and 3D design software to make prosthetics for children and adults who are missing fingers, hands, and wrists, and we're giving them away for free. One of the reasons 3D printing is so well suited to this problem is no two cases are exactly the same. Um, you know, some kids are missing all of their fingers, some are missing even the, the palm and the wrist. One of the reasons we can produce these devices for in kind of incredibly low cost, well under $100, is these devices are entirely body driven, purely mechanical, so there are no motors, there are no sensors, there are no heavy batteries, so it's a very lightweight, very simple device. These hands don't even pretend to look like normal hands, they're very different. These things look like something Iron Man or a superhero would have, and the kids love them for that reason. so that it can, so that the person can not slide through, and then when their wrist bends down, the fingers bend down with it. Wow. That's so cute. I want to see it, but... Do you guys want to try it? So you just like do this, and then you do this. Fingers will go down. So what's really remarkable about these hands is it costs about $3 in supplies, filament and these little screws and so forth. So you can print a new hand each time the child grows until they are finished growing, then they can really invest in, in a more expensive prosthetic. But this is really a pretty fantastic way to use the technology in the schools. After we printed the prosthetic hands, we took our 3D printer and we took on a community service project that we called Tactile Books, where we printed objects to go with classic children's stories. We gave the books and the objects to Prince William County teachers of children uh, that have visual impairments. So we were able to take a book like Goodnight Moon, print picture, and then print the braille to go along with it or even something like a porcupine named Fluffy where how else could a child touch what a porcupine feels like and get the joke that you'd never call a porcupine Fluffy. So if we could show that uh, video as well, please. And that's uh, one of the lead teachers of the visually impaired students and some of our students that printed those objects. So we're able to offer our students these SPARC funded experiences because of the generous donations of our community and business partnerships. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the executive director of SPARC, Sharon Henry. And also tonight, we have Chuck Drake, who is on the SPARC Grant Review Committee. And I also have with me one of our fifth grade students, Rowan Godseth. Rowan took an open source file, modified it, and we made these 3D printed bookmarks for board members. Mm. Thank you. Here, you can pass these over to the board. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Welcome. Very nice. I would like to call this meeting of the Prince William County School Board to order. There will be a moment of silence at the request of Allison Satterwhite of the Gainesville District. OK, 
Okay, thank you. We'll do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. If a student would like to come up to the mic, we can have that student introduce themselves and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have anyone? If not, Annabelle, you're going to... Good. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Moving on to the approval of the public meeting agenda. A motion is in order. Do I have a first? Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt the uh, public meeting agenda as recommended. Do you have a second? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Williams. I'd like to second. So that was uh, Mr. Deutsch on the first, Williams on the second. Discussion? Please vote. The vote is seven yes, unanimous. Motion passed. Moving on to the adoption of the consent agenda. A motion is in order. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting consent agenda as recommended. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to second. So first by Deutsch, second by Williams. Discussion? Please vote. The vote is seven yes, unanimous. Motion passed. During this time on the agenda, the student representative and alternates will speak and have an opportunity to introduce themselves and share their interests. Our student representative first will be Sasan Faraj, Patriot High School. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, hold on, did I? No, no. It's on here. Got it. Did I? So are we at citizen's time now? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. So they have it. I have it screwed up on my um, thing. My apologies. Um, Sasan, you'll have to take a minute on this, or 30 minutes. Uh, moving on to citizen comments on the agenda, non-agenda items. It looks like that we have eight or so speakers. They will all have a chance to speak. Um, if uh, everyone who signed up, if you guys can please come up to the front, and I will. Um, so that's everyone who signed up. Please come up to the front. Um, you will have three minutes to speak, and the clerk will keep the time. The lights on the monitor will indicate your progress. The yellow light will signify that you should sum up your position. Red indicates your time is up or, and you should stop. Please use proper decorum manners while at the podium. If you do not do so, you'll be asked to step aside. Please give your name and address for the record when you approach the podium. Our first speaker is Jennifer Rakowski. Hi, good evening, Chairman Latif, school board members, and Dr. Waltz. My name is Jennifer Rakowski, and my address is on file with the clerk. At the September 5th school board meeting, you voted to approve a resolution recognizing Energy Action Month in October. As members of the PWCS Energy Management Team, I and my colleague, Jeannie Jabera, um, want to take the opportunity to thank you for approving this resolution. I would like to let you know there are more than 45 schools with active green teams working with us to help implement regulations 494-1 and 494-3 to conserve energy, increase recycling practices, and spread sustainability literacy through their schools. We hope you'll follow all their efforts on social media by following our account, PWCS Energy Team, and look for the hashtags PWCS Energy, hashtag Go Green PWCS, hashtag PWCS Recycles, and hashtag All in the Bin. You can also find information on our website, pwcs.edu slash energy management. Last school year, PWCS avoided an estimated 6.2 million in utility costs and had an energy reduction impact of 27,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide. This year, in addition to focusing on behavior modification to reduce utility costs, we are increasing our efforts to increase student participation across the division by providing lessons, contests, and media production in energy conservation, recycling, and sustainability. We are working with curriculum content areas, including science, library, 
and CTE to help spread awareness of our energy management program and make you a member of the team, we'd like to give each of you an energy team t-shirt and a bag, which we'll give to Mrs. Urban. Thank you. Thank you, Richard Jesse. My name is Richard Jesse, my address is on file. I wanna to talk to you tonight about the uh, Regulation 133-1, School Board Governance and Operation, dated October 26, 2016, page two. Basically, this regulation is how a person signs up for citizen time. One point on here that uh, Mr. Irvin reminded me of, because usually I say miscellaneous and so forth, but in your regulation, it states that speakers must also identify the issue of public concerns upon which they will be speaking. To me, this is somewhat intimidating for some folks because they don't feel comfortable uh, saying what they want to say before they say it. Also, from some past experience, in my opinion, the school system has taken the advantage of knowing what the people are gonna say and then preparing things to counteract that. One prime example was when Woodbridge High School made some concerns. There was a big six, I think it was about six foot poster that uh, the school system put out to show all that they have done for Woodbridge High School. To me, this is intimidation. And I think the school system, and I hope encourage the uh, school board to do like the county board of supervisors. First of all, the county board of supervisors, you just walk in and you sign in. You don't call in ahead of time. You don't identify what you're gonna speak and they let everybody speak. And I don't see why the school system can't do the same thing. And I do feel that sometimes it is used to intimidation. I know, you know, I enjoy and appreciate the Positively Prince William CS, and I hope I don't get the reputation of being the negative PYWCS. Thank you. Thank you. John Znadel? Snadel? Snadel. Snadel. Am I my turn? Yes, yes. Yes, I am John Snadel. Hello, everybody. I'm I wanted to come tonight uh, and talk to you in recognition of uh, Freedom From Workplace Bullies Week. Uh, some of you may know that I'm the guy who worked with his state delegate uh, to put through the Healthy School Workplaces Bill, uh, law actually, that went into effect this year. As someone who has a lot of experience with this subject, I did contact some of you um, to offer my assistance in writing the regulations uh, that were required by the new law, uh, but I got no response. So, uh, but meanwhile, it is my intention to uh, stay in touch and watch how the new law performs in the future. And as time goes by, if it appears that there needs to be adjustments made to the law, we can, we can go to work on it. Now, as for the Prince William County teachers, I'd like to say this. Um, if you become aware this year of workplace bullying in your building, don't allow it. Um, it causes both emotional and stress-related physical harm, so it is a form of violence. React to bullying as a staff. I might suggest that in a staff meeting, at a designated time, the entire staff should stand and face the bully. Someone, maybe even the bully target, whoever that is, um, would then tell the bully that everyone knows what is happening and that they all want it to stop right now. They have seen the evidence and it's clear that a staff member is being harassed. You see, you need to tell the bully principal that the target is not isolated and the bully target needs to know they are not being abandoned. And if there are any staff members who don't want to participate in something like this because they, are, they feel they are among the popular teachers on the staff and they 
don't have anything to worry about being bullied or threatened, tell them this. They may, be, may very well be one principle away from their own bully. It can happen to anybody. Also, they need to know, uh, they need to be told that workplace bullying creates health and safety hazards for workers, and it decreases productivity, it poisons the atmosphere in a school, so it's not just somebody else's personal problem. Victims of workplace bullying have a greater chance of surviving professionally when the school staff is unified, so practice solidarity. It's good for teachers, and anything that's good for teachers is good for students. Thank you. Thank you. Charles Ronco. Good evening. My name is Charles Ronco. I live in the Coles District, and I am here to speak about the PSAT. Um, okay, so a couple of things. There's right now a national conversation about the fact that not every student is going to go to college, and that's a good thing. We have a big push in CTE. That's another good thing. So I ask, why are we stovepiping 20,000 plus kids through a PSAT that not everybody is going to need to take? Not everyone's going to take the SAT. So you got a third of the students who aren't qualified to take it because they're freshmen and they don't have the math for it. You have a third of the students who aren't interested in it and they put their head down or fill in blank bubbles. Why are we doing this? This is making a heck, heck of a lot of sense. And it's the unofficial senior skip day. <laughs> so again, we're kind of like losing the point on this. Now, October is an important month because it's, you know, the budget has been finalized. We've leveled all of our classes. Now all of a sudden we have a full month where we're actually in sync. All right, the classes are moving along. We, we know our kids' names. We've met with parents. We've done conferences. We're ready to roll. And now all of a sudden, right smack dab in the middle of it, last week we take the PSAT. Now the problem is, is that after that, all of a sudden we have to catch up on all the classes that we missed that day, which means a full week, half, we have to have a messed up schedule. So now all of a sudden we've kind of like disrupted the flow. And it's the only month of real good flow. We're also spending $300,000 doing it. So, those of you who know me, pretty much everybody, knows that I don't come to this board just with problems. I come with a solution. Move the PSAT two days before so that it's on touch base day. Make it elective. This way we don't disrupt the schedule. Now all of a sudden, the kids who want to take it, who are qualified to take it, take it on that Monday. We don't disrupt this. the teachers. They're all meeting with the parents anyway, so we get a couple of roppers doing it. Not a big deal. Now all of a sudden, we're going to save roughly a third or two thirds, and all of that money can go towards budget priorities. I just want to put it in, out, into the, out into the ether, because I think realistically, we really could save this money and actually really, you know, target the students who are going to be using, the, who are going to be taking the PSAT, uh, start taking the SAT later. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great day. Thank you. Jude Morris. Hello, my name is Jude Morris, and um, my address is on file with the secretary. This is my second time coming before you guys, and I just want to say thank you for listening and for caring about the parents and for responding. It really is appreciated. I have a twofold issues I want to talk to you about tonight. One is Woodbridge High School. We really would like the contract that's put forth to not or to not require a crumb rubber field. We would like it open so that there is an option as to what kind of turf field that we can get. The second one is not just my second issue is not just Woodbridge, but it does affect me personally. But in talking to transportation, it apparently affects many schools high schools, elementary, middle schools. On October 4th, my son missed the bus, although he left the house at 6.45 for a 7.03 pickup. I couldn't believe it, he walked to school. The next day I went out with him to make sure he missed the bus again. We're like, what's going on? They had changed his bus time. No longer was it 7.05, it is now 6.39. No one informed us. We were told that notices were given out in the afternoon. He plays football. He doesn't ride the afternoon bus. That Monday, I went out with him to see this bus. 
and unfortunately, one of our neighbors was hit by a car trying to get to the bus. My big issue here is he is now arriving at Woodbridge High School 40 minutes before the start of school. What is he supposed to do with those 40 minutes? My son is saying, Mom, should I get up at 5, 5.30, 5 o'clock? I'm like, are you crazy? You need to, you rest. One of the things we're encouraging people is that the high schoolers need their rest. But we want him to catch a bus and spend 40 minutes at school sitting on a bench, waiting. In talking with transportation, I'm told that there's a driver shortage. And I, I mean, I understand that, but this is not working. The, one of the ladies I spoke with today said, this is not the longest wait time for students. She said there's another high school that has a longer wait time. The kids are getting to school over 40 minutes before the start of school. This double back is not working. I wish I could come up with a solution. My solution is that my son is not gonna walk to school and get hit by a car. I'm driving him. I'm not making him wake up extra early, but not everybody has that advantage. And this is not fair. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kate Olson Flynn. Good evening, board members, Chairman Latif, and Dr. Waltz. Uh, my name is Dr. Kate Olson Flynn, and my address is on file. First, I want to say um, I'm here. I also wear red in support of all teachers today um, that I've had the pleasure and honor to teach and work with here in Prince William County and across the country. Undervalued teachers work heroically and ceaselessly, making sacrifices daily to ensure a better and brighter future for us all. And for that service, they should be well compensated. Teachers who feel empowered to teach the curriculum in a way that is best for their classroom and their students. Teachers who are respected for their expertise and time. Teachers who are rewarded in their practice monetarily. And teachers who are able to work in safe, modern, updated facilities make better learning communities for us all. Second, a very important issue to us at Woodbridge is that I ask the board and the administration to please open the request for proposal for the turf field at Woodbridge High School and Stonewall and allow bids for companies that use ecologically safe materials. Our group, Parents Who Care, is not asking you for more money out of the 2019 budget for the fields. Our simple request is that the RFP be written in a way that allows for ecologically safe companies to make bids, period. When the bids are then in, a decision can be made as to which type of field would be best for our schools. However, I want to remind you that the central administration provided justification for why taxpayers should spend $110 million in the CIP on Colgan for the very best space, the very best buildings, and the very best fields at that time. Therefore, to be consistent with those types of priorities, you should not decline our request to consider and use better materials for field use. And I know it is in you all as public servants to do the right thing for all the students in this county. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer Gilley. Good evening, my name is Jennifer Gil Gilley and my address is on file. Never in my wildest dreams or nightmares did I ever think that I would be speaking in front of a group of board members about anything, much less many times, um, much less better schools for my children. I am tired, tired of meetings, tired of arguing, tired of leaving my husband at home with our children to feed while I put on my cape and try to save the world, or at least Woodbridge High School. I feel like I'm campaigning. The number of people I talk with each day about the issues at Woodbridge and how they need to be fixed. And then to listen to people talk about how they are alumni and how the school is almost the same as it was 15, 20, 30 years ago when they were there. I'm not a Viking. I was born and raised in South Florida. I'm a Gator. I met and married another Gator and he moved me around with the military to land here so that our children could finish their school years in one city, one school. We own a, ho <coughs> we own a house in Panama City, Florida and have renters who stayed last week during the hurricane. 
After seeing the damage to the entire town that one of my children was born in, it seems petty for me to be standing here asking for a safe field for our students to play on, or better Wi-Fi for our students to be safe in school, or even updated facilities that come close to other high schools in Prince William County. But just like the parents down there who want the best for their children, I believe my children deserve the best that is available to them. I never wanted my boys to play football. Soccer was our game of choice. I packed up bags of orange slices, brought shin guards, and wore my proud mama smile at every practice and, gave, and game for the last 15 years. I drove them all around to the games and tournaments and then back home. I cleaned out the car, vacuumed the rugs, cleaned out the drains of all of the black crumb rubber pellets, never thinking that this could possibly hurt my children. We can't protect our children from hurricanes or other natural disasters, but we can protect them from dangers that are right in front of us. When we hear that riding a bike without a helmet could be dangerous, we buy the helmet. When we hear that playing football or soccer or any other sport could cause a concussion in any variety of ways, we take the training, we buy the gear, and we pray that they stay safe. This is something that we can protect them from, the tiny black pellets that we don't have to fill our dirt turf field with. Sure, there are other fillers that we may not know if they are problematic right now, but these we are finding out are a problem. I've managed to keep them safe this long. Please help me to continue by making the field safe that they play on. Thank you. Thank you. Chrissy Falls. Hello. Good evening. My address is on file. I'm trying to make it under my three minutes. <laughs> here, I'm here tonight to remind you one last time, please encourage your schools, elementary, middle, and high school to participate in Red Ribbon Week. It's important. I know that they're hard topics to talk about. Not many are informed on how to talk to kids about drugs, but we did send out numerous of resources. You as well. I sent you the same resources that the School system sent out to all of the schools via email as well as paper. Um, Monday night at Colgan High School, thank you Mr. Deutsch for co-hosting this with us, we will be talking about the topic of addiction. I think that's something that most people really don't understand. Um, why should we be talking about this with our children? Although taking drugs at any age can lead to addiction, research shows that the earlier a person begins to use drugs, the more likely he or she can develop serious problems. This may be due to the harmful effects that drugs can have on the developing brain. It also may result from a mix of early social and biological risk factors, including lack of a stable home or family, exposure to physical or sexual abuse, genes or mental illness. Still, the fact remains that early use is a strong indicator of problems ahead, including addiction. What are some of the environmental factors? Home and family. The home environment, especially during childhood, is a very important factor. Parents or older family members who use drugs or misuse alcohol or who break the law can increase children's risk of future drug problems. Peers in school. Friends and other peers can have an increasingly strong influence during the teen years. Teens who use drugs can sway even though without risk factors to try drugs for the first time. Struggling in school or having poor social skills can put a child further at risk for using or becoming addicted to drugs. Please encourage your schools. If they don't participate in Red Ribbon Week, ask them why. Do they need help? Do they need support? There are small nonprofits, uh, just like mine, that will come into the schools. We'll help them decorate their doors. But educate yourself on Red Ribbon Week. If we don't you know, encourage our schools to do this, we've given them the resources. Let us help them get the information out there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll be moving on to the student representative at this time. Um, Sasan Faraj, Patriot High School. Uh, good evening, everyone. This week, I visited Colgan's SCA, and I held my very first town hall at Patriot High School. 
I'll spend my time, time talking about both events in order. First, I went to Colgan. The students at Colgan addressed that schools should increase their focus around school safety. Although schools meet a certain number of drills throughout the year, the students requested that a more rigorous type of practice be put in place. For instance, mandating that schools have fire drills during lunch or, and hallway changes was brought up. This is a concept that can and, can and should be applied throughout Prince William County because student safety is always a priority. When an emergency occurs, it is better to be safe than sorry. If we increase the amount of drills that students con schools conduct tied with an increase of variety on how these drills or when these drills are conducted, students will be provided more opportunities to learn wh about what to do in an emergency situation. If schools were to conduct a fire drill or lockdown during lunch, the students could take what they learned from the that scenario and apply it to an emergency situation in a public area, such as a mall or a coffee, a coffee shop. The school board can assure student safety both in school and out of school by mandating schools to change how they practice student safety currently to a more lifelike style practice. A few days after Colgan, I held my very first town hall at Patriot High School. Although the turnout was low, productivity was high. Because the turnout was low, we ended up having more of a Socratic style discussion. A lot, uh, a lot of what was said corroborated what was discussed at Colgan. The students focused a lot of their time on student safety as well. Luckily, the school head of security was able to attend. The students were receptive to the idea of conducting more drills that are considered out of the norm because it would help prepare them for, future, uh, for the future. Also, they suggested that having an interactive school security team made them feel safer during unplanned lockdowns or secure the building protocols. This is extremely important. Throughout the past month, I have brought up educational environment during the board meetings. When students trust their staff and feel as though they can they have a connection thereof, they feel safer going to school. They are able to focus on the materials being taught without fearing safety. Again, this indicates that the school board should encourage for a more interactive staff. Students felt as though having, a, having mandatory assemblies with the respective security teams would help instill trust in the security teams and help build a foundation to starting a school-wide relationship. During these assemblies, students can write questions to ask or ask questions directly to the teams concerning safety issues. The other main focus of the town hall was mental health. First, I would like to acknowledge that the second top priority on the newly released budget priorities for the next year by the superintendent of schools, Dr. Waltz, is mental health. It is extremely re uh, relieving to see that mental health is a high priority. I personally thank you for that decision, and I am sure the students do too. Last board meeting, Annabelle read my speech and it wrote, quote, students are taught what signs to look for, but not what sign, uh, students are taught to look for signs, but not what signs to look for. Yes, students go through health classes and learn about mental health. However, this requires more. Like the ideas of, of assemblies with the security team, students specifically detailed they be brought out of class by grade in order to learn about, how, about signs of suicide and suicide prevention in general. Sure, there will be a few noisy people, but the collective majority will benefit. The school board should mandate or encourage schools to increase their focus on mental health. And after Battlefield students brought up the idea of hiring more guidance counselors countywide, I decided to suggest this idea to the students at the town hall. The students felt as though this was a good idea, but more can be done. Last year, Kate Arnold uh, also discussed the idea of mandatory training for teachers. Although teachers have opportunities to learn about the science of mental health, I suggest a biannual meetings between teachers and the counseling staff or other professionals focusing on suicide prevention. This is a touchy subject, yes, but we should end the stigma associated with talking about mental health. It is a subject that impacts all students countywide. Even though students can go to counselors, they feel as though counselors do not have enough time for them. Again, this is a part of an educational environment. Students feel that since teachers see them on a day-to-day -day basis, the teachers are more likely to pick up on any signs. It is not the teacher's job to fix these issues, but they can certainly direct them towards the right path. On a lighter note, I'll be visiting Woodbridge High School on the 23rd and Potomac High School on the 25th. I'm currently planning to visit Garfield and Freedom in November. I'll continue to make my way throughout the high schools. And students can always reach me at my county given email. I'll spell it out. F-A-R-A-J-S-A-19 at pwcs-edu.org. Thank you. Thank you, son. Maybe we'll try the Socratic method next time here. Annabelle Bergeron, Brentsville District High School. Good evening. I hope everyone has had a wonderful past two weeks. Last week, I had the pleasure of visiting the Noakesville K-8 through School. I would first like to say thank you to Mr. Worcester and all of the teachers for their time and gratitude. I met with all 6th, 7th, and 8th grade classes to discuss my position as one of the student representatives, as well as what I do and how they can be involved. 
I wanted to make it clear to all of these bright young minds how much their voice really matters. It was so interesting to see their faces light up with the idea that they can make a difference. I explained to them a little bit about my position and they were eager to start preparing for their journey to a student representative. As I told the sixth graders, although high school seems far away, it really is just around the corner. And it's never too early to start your journey to becoming a leader. It was important to me that all of the students understood how much Sasan, Wilfredo, and I really value their input and opinions. I wanted them to know that we took these positions to improve their schools and their time in Prince William County. I hope that these students take advantage of having student representatives and tell us what's truly important to them so we can make a difference. Thank you to all of the inquisitive minds that I met, and thank you for welcoming back a former tiger with open arms. I'm so thankful I was able to speak to each and every one of you. Now, on a more personal note, I would like to speak about an issue that I have been experiencing firsthand, apathy. Apathy has begun to run rampant throughout high school, and I wish I could say it were only a few students here and there, but it's not, and it's not only in the student population. In my very own school, administration has shown apathy towards our students time and time again. They always tell us, you're in high school now, you're almost adults, it's time to start acting like it. Although we're expected to act like adults, when we bring attention to issues, the administration at my school find a way to ignore students' concerns. Administrators have refused meetings with students, ignored emails with clear concerns, and shown that what students have to say doesn't really matter. As a student representative, I wouldn't be doing my part if I didn't shed some light on this very prominent issue. It's important that if we pride ourselves on being a school system that cares about each student, that we actually care about each student. I'm very proud to be a tiger, and I love my school, but we need to do better. Schools should be a place of kindness and respect, and this only comes if everyone gives one another the kindness and respect they deserve. It's hard for students to care if they don't actually feel that they're cared about. Thank you. Thank you. Is Wilfredo here today? No, okay. I think we're moving on to superintendent's time. Or, uh, no, I'm sorry, student learning and accountability. Um, annual school calendar, this item is for action. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the pre-Labor Day option for the 2019-2020 annual school calendar. Mr. Chairman? Uh, Ms. Williams. I'd like to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is seven yes, unanimous, motion passed. Thank you, superintendent's time. Dr. Waltz. Thank you very much. I'm proud to share that the October 10th edition of the Prince William Times, I'm holding up a copy, published an editorial commending Prince William County Public Schools for our on-time graduation rate. I would like to thank the Prince William Times and read just a few excerpts from the article. Graduation rates in 2018 remain on the upswing for area schools at a time when good news seems harder to come by. This is worth celebrating. The report defines on-time graduation as entering ninth grade, graduating in four years after they start. Prince William County also saw graduation rates rise for the 11th straight year. The county's rate of 92.1% also beat the state rate. The graduation rates of all student groups, including black, Hispanic, white, Asian, economically disadvantaged, English learners, and students with disabilities, also surpassed the state averages in Prince William. Prince William's graduation rate rose nearly 9% in the last decade. When taking into account the challenges faced by many schools, including overcrowding and teacher shortages, the fact that such a high percentage of kids are staying in school and earning their diplomas is good news. Earning a high school diploma has become an absolute necessity. Students who lack one are denied many of the most basic opportunities. They cannot enlist in the military and can be shut out of even minimum wage jobs. 
Finishing high school successfully also opens the doors to career advancement and further educational opportunities down the road. Just as important is the impact on educated citizenry has on the whole society. High school graduates who have a good foundation on how and why things work are far more likely to take an interest in and have a positive influence in the community. In the end, in a public school setting, we all want to know we are getting value for our investment. These positive graduation rate numbers are a relatively good indicator of money well spent. Well done students, teachers, administrations, and staff. Again, the Prince William Times, you can read the whole article. Those are just a few excerpts. Moving into another area of good news, eight PWCS teachers are among only 556 in the entire nation who were recognized as a Wise Foundation Gold Star teacher. To be considered, a teacher must have achieved a 93% pass rate in at least one class on either the fall 17 or spring 19 WISE financial literacy certification test. Congratulations to Diana Bohuslav from Battlefield High School, Claudia Swint and Kendra Wilkins from Forest Park High School, Jill Cahill, Robin Etheridge and Sharon Hardy from Patriot High, and Jesse DeStacy and Michelle uh, Karnbach from Woodbridge High School. I recently had the honor of participating in a career day event at Woodbridge High School that was sponsored by the Army Junior Reserve Officers Training Corps. I commend the cadets on this event. Cadets showed enthusiasm for learning about many careers, including that of the superintendent of schools, and they asked a lot of really good questions. Tonight, I also want to provide an update on the progress of implementing the recommendations highlighted last May in the Comprehensive Review of Special Education. This is currently and will continue to be a top budget priority. This report was shared with the board and included recommendations in 24 areas. I am very pleased tonight to announce that under the leadership of Associate Superintendent Rita Goss and Director of Special Education, Dr. Michelle Roper, intensive work has already begun in addressing many of the recommendations of the report. For example, two of the recommendations focused on communication devices and assistive technology. Specifically, the recommendation was made to hire an additional assistive technology professional. I have authorized this new position immediately in the current budget. Just this week, we have made great progress and we are already seeking candidates for such a position. We held our regional school funding harmless this budget year, 2018 and 2019, by adding an additional $3 million from local funds into special education. I intend to recommend and offset this next year as the state reduction in special ed funding continues. As I work with Dr. Roper and Mrs. Goss and our school teams and in alignment with my superintendent goals for the year, I will continue to highlight our work in this area at future board meetings. And finally, I attended the Potomac Health Foundation's annual celebration uh, today and at that event that is a foundation that gives large amounts of money to help various groups, including the Prince William County Public Schools. Their foundation supports uh, many of the projects in our school division and helps support the families and uh, students and their families in our school division. And I also just want to give a shout out to Wayne Mallard, who serves on their uh, board of directors. So again, thank you to the Potomac Health Foundation for all your contributions to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Waltz. We're going to move on to board matters. 18.01, adoption of revised policy 123, duties of the clerk, deputy clerk, deletion of policy 123.02, .02, regulation 123. Uh, Ms. McGowan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this matter comes back, this policy comes back after um, uh, input from the board on the, on the previous meeting, and it has been revised to return to the original language, which, kind of, which tracks the statute that provides that the clerks will be supervised at the general direction of the superintendent, and to add at the administrative oversight of the division council. Um, these are the changes to this one, and uh, it's, it's on the board for action this evening. 
Discussion? Or a motion? Um, I'd like to make the motion. Yep. That the Prince William County School Board approve the adoption of the revised policy 123, duties of the clerk and deputy clerk, and deletion of policy 123.02 and regulation 123.02-1, further revised as of October 3rd, 2018. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is seven yes, unanimous. Motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to 18.02, adoption of policy 115. Do you have a motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Deutsch. I move that the Prince William County School Board adopt policy 115, compensation reimbursement of board matters, further revised as of October 3rd, 2018, delete policy 115.01, regulation 115.01-1, and policy 122.01. Do you have a second? Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Williams. I'd like to second. Any discussion? Please vote. The vote is seven yes, unanimous. Motion passed. Thank you. We'll move to 1803. Four, five, six will be the first readings. I will turn this over to Ms. McGowan to do your lovely 100 series recap, Emmy Award winning performances. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 1803 <laughs> is, a, is a recommendation to delete policy 13102, which is the former policy called opening ceremonies for school board meetings. The board has adopted earlier this evening policy 132, regular, special, and closed meetings, which now incorporates the substance of old policy 13102. Um, 18, moving on to 1804, this is the adoption of new policy 133 school board hearing procedure and the deletion of its former version, which was policy 13101. We're renumbering a lot of these policies in order to get them in uh, sensible order and to eliminate decimals to the extent we can. Um, this one is legally driven. This contains updated, um, just some updates to the due process procedures that are used by the school board for hearings that are usually legally required hearings, such as teacher dismissal hearings or licensure revocation hearings. Um, we've also added um, a suggestion from Mr. Trenum that um, where continuances are granted in such hearings, that the process for uh, obtaining the board's consent to a continuance is to use the polling procedure. Uh, moving on to 1805 is the adoption of revised policy 134, citizen participation. This is also asking for the deletion of old 133 and regulation 133.1, citizen comment. Those that previous policy and regulation have been wrapped into the new policy with the, with the new number of 134. Uh, I, I invite the board over the next two weeks to um, provide me with any comments or any discussion um, uh, devoted to the various uh, paragraphs in this policy which are designed to improve the efficiency of board meetings. Uh, such topics include whether or not to limit citizen comment time to Prince William County citizens, employees, and stakeholders, uh, whether to limit uh, citizen comment to agenda items, or to limit the uh, speaker's time to make any modifications, that is, to any of the existing processes. I would, I would point out that these, that these um, suggested topics for consideration um, come up now where we're at eight o'clock on a board meeting, where I think when we were formulating these, we were coming out of the experience of last year where we'd be here till one o'clock in the morning. So it, you might wanna take those um, recommendations with, um, into consideration in, in the present situation. Going on to 1806, this is the adoption of a brand new policy, policy 135, procedures for nomination or election 
this is a policy that the parliamentarian crafted, uh, noticing that we had a, um, a, a hole in our, uh, we didn't have this covered in our board governance procedures. Um, if you have any questions about that, um, I know Mr. Balk would be happy to answer them, but his policy f follows his experience and observations of the last year on how the board has operated in the absence of a written policy relative to nomina nominations. And then we have policy 1807, or we have item 1807, which is the adoption of revised policy 136 voting. Uh, this is simple changes, uh, primarily driven by the Virginia Code. Yeah. Did you want me to stop on that? Yep. Yeah, sorry. I, I well, you're saying 1807, you're talking about 1806. I, so I, I think we've got some confusion here because I'm not seeing the policy on um, citizen comment time on here, which I think is throwing your numbering off. Yeah. Ah. And then there's an 1808, Debbie, and there's no 1807 on our computer. But the screen shows in 1807 and 1806. Anyways, um, on the ones that she's talked about so far, does anybody have any comments, any thoughts? So again, as she pointed out, over the next couple weeks, let's really take a look at those. Um, look at Gill's yellow and red marks and um, go along with those. I think, so you, this, the one that's missing on the screen is the citizen comment one. but. You did let us know that. So if you want to just go ahead and tell us about the, what's the voting one? 18. Voting is the last one. Okay. Citizen comment was on the written agenda that we. I know it's not for whatever it's not. Yeah. It's not here. Um, so the last one is is the voting one, and okay. that's just simple revisions to comply with the Virginia Code. Nothing major okay. on that one. So just uh, Miss Urban, let's um, you know for the sake of public notice, note that we did discuss. The, what was the policy number on citizen comment? 134. So 134. That needs to be added to the agenda and noted that what it was discussed as a first reading so that next time we can bring that up as a second reading. Thank you. We'll go on to any, Mr. Deutsch. Well, I, I don't think we had a first reading on an item that we didn't have on our agenda. No. Um, it's on the written agenda. I don't know why it's not on the screen. Okay. So I don't think it should count as a first reading if we haven't, if we don't have it here. All right, we'll put it on as a first. Okay. Just it, a first it's reading, it's so. just a computer error. Like if we have. Well, it's not in the. It was not, not in board docs board. for a prep. It's for not the on the board docs, is it? It was not in board docs at all from prep for the meeting. Okay, just. All right, we'll do it for first reading next meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, I don't know what the glitch is because it it, it is on this on the paper, which meant it was on the screen, so I apologize. It's, it's not, so we're not seeing it in board docs. No, she's saying that it's, it's um, We get the agenda from board docs, so I'm not sure what the glitch is, but I'll take care of it. Okay, we'll do it for a first reading next time, not a problem. Um, is that okay, Mr. Deutsch? Yep. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll move on to, 1808, documents necessary, convenient for the construction and or operation 13th High School. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Mr. Um, hold on, I think, sure, Mr. Trenum. Oh, sure. I move that the Prince William County School Board authorize the interim chairman at large to execute the name of the school board, in the name of the school board, all documents necessary or convenient for the construction and or operation of the 13th High School, including deed of dedication, utility easements, and reservation of areas required by law. Do I have a second? Mr. I'll second Chairman. I'm oh, sorry. Ms. Williams. I'd like to second. Okay. Um, do we have any discussion? I do. Go, um, Ms. I asked for this to be pulled from the consent agenda because I just think it's, um, it, when it comes to the 13th high school, we had so much discussion on the board and in um, the public. I just wanted to make sure that the public is able to follow anything going along with this high school, considering there were special funds um, that were designated to us as a school board for the expansion of the school. And just myself as a board member previewing um, our materials, because we do 
get them before the general public and they're published. Um, wasn't really sure what it was. I didn't have any specific questions. Um, clearly, it's more laid out here now. But I just think it's important that when we make um, special considerations from the Board of County Supervisors that you know we just bring it to the public's attention and um, that they're aware that the work is progressing. So I'm sorry, Mr. Mallard, I didn't follow up with you. I just want to publicly apologize for that. My fault. Um, but I just thought it was really uh, something that was a, a matter of importance considering all of the discussion that went into um, the additional monies um, provided for the school by the Board of County Supervisors. Mr. Trenum. Oh, okay. Um, please vote. Vote is seven yes, unanimous. Motion passed. Thank you. I think we're moving on to board matters at this point. Um, I think last time we started with uh, Ms. Satterwhite, we'll start with Mr. Deutsch. Sounds like a plan. And uh, since we just passed a policy to limit board matters speeches to three minutes, I will uh, be brief. Um, and thank you, Ms. Ralston, for making that happen. Uh, really exciting thing. Uh, this last week, uh, I got to go to Hilton High School. Uh, they had a Divisional uh, tournament for the girls' cheer teams. Um, really uh, exciting, incredible performances. Uh, first place was Hilton, uh, second place Woodbridge, and third place Colgan. Um, but all around, I think we had 12 teams there and uh, some really, really impressive performances overall. Uh, and then also just wanted to uh, re-encourage people uh, this coming Monday, October 22nd at Colgan High School, we're going to be doing a town hall on um, addiction, um, and we've had a number of town halls on issues that are important on the mental health front and important to students, and they've been very well uh, staffed with experts in their fields uh, and very informative, very helpful, uh, very useful experts. So encourage people to uh, share it with other people and come on out. Um, I'm sure you'll have uh, some people that you'll learn from and be able to be there to help other people in the community uh, as um, you're aware of things or maybe skills that even be important um, as we all face challenges in life down the road. Ms. William. Th thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. I, Mr. Deutsch, we didn't pass a three minute speech limit yet, did we? Did I miss that? I thought we just did the clerk and the compensation. For the, it's all oh, under the compensation. It's under the consent agenda, policy 132. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Thank you for reminding me. Um, sometimes I forget things, so that was helpful. Um, so, um, probably because I'm focused on the football game that I attended, Ooh. where, yeah. you know, even though my heart will right. always belong to Woodbridge because I'm a Woodbridge alumni, it's not often that I like gloat on sports, but, you know, 30 to 7. Oof. It was the final score there, and I just wanted to congratulate. Yeah, I don't ever get to rub any sports anything in, so I'm just kind of like smiling. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> standing on the sidelines, I know. I just wanted to congratulate Freedoms Cortez Jackson for being the Omni Rides Prep Football Player of the Week. Um, it was really a fun game. It was really fun for me, especially because that was the first time in a long time that I was standing on the side of uh, Woodbridge's field, and this time it was as a board member and not as a ball girl for the varsity football team. Yes, I actually spent many, many Fridays covered in that lovely red clay getting yelled at by my mother, like, couldn't you do something more girly? And I was like, no, because I get to yell at football players, which is fun. So it was. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to also bring attention and thank uh, Miss Abney because she was the first principal this year to have Freedom Soul Squad marching band performed during halftime. And um, I just wanted to publicly thank her for that because that is the only um, soul marching band from Washington, D.C. to Richmond. And they, as I've just been informed, have been invited to perform at the St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York, which is one of the oldest parades in the country. So if you are interested 
in helping these students get there, they are looking for donations to fund their trip. It's going to cost about $15,000 for them to go, but it is an extremely prestigious honor to be invited to perform at that parade. If you have not seen them, they are amazing. Um, I am a little biased because I'm a huge marching band fan. Um, I have also asked them, hopefully sometime in the spring, to come back and perform again for us um, so that everyone can see me up here lose my mind because I'm sure that's fun and entertaining. Um, but they are just absolutely amazing. Um, I wanted to also announce that there is an upcoming joint CIP committee meeting on October 22nd, which will be held at the McCourt building. It is open to the public. Um, that is where both the Board of County Supervisors and the school board representatives come together to try to work together to understand our processes, uh, reduce overcrowding, and other various topics. Um, I encourage citizens to come and um, see what we're doing at the committee meeting. It's really important to the progress of our county. Um, we also have, I'm also requesting um, if we could, as board members, get an update on program capacity status for middle and high schools. Um, it's something that I've been very interested in for the past two years, and I know that our staff has been working on it, but I have not recently asked for it, um, and I just kind of thought now would be a good time to see where we are at. I know it's not anywhere near completed, um, but um, I think that would be something that the board um, would be of interest to the board. Um, I'm also interested to see if we could find out now that our September 30th deadline has passed, our enrollment numbers um, and transfer numbers for our high schools. Um, I think that um, that will also help us as it comes up, up to budget time. Um, and I am just so pleased again to hear from our student representatives. I'd like to encourage our, our school principals to do their best to advertise these town halls on behalf of the students. Um, I think it's really important that we spread the word and I know the students do a very good job but I think it's also um, a, a role that administration can help and assist with. Um, I know I attended a one last year and um, a lot of the students weren't really aware that it was occurring. And I think if we attack it from both sides, we'll have um, good success. So um, I think that's about it. So thank you. Ms. Ralston. Thank you, I'll pass. Mr. Trenum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I will be brief. Um, I want to, first off, I want to congratulate uh, Ms. Ann Nuzzo. She is the Brinsville um, representative to the Safe Schools Advisory Council. At the last meeting, she was uh, elected the chair for 2018 and 2019. So congratulations, Ann. But more importantly, I wanted to bring up the Safe Schools Advisory Council. Every year they pick a topic this year uh, uh, that they want to address um, with regards to our, our student population. This year, the, the focus is resiliency. So that uh, goes very, uh, very uh, much aligns with the uh, discussions on mental health. And uh, I think it's a different aspect about it that we don't think about or talk about uh, too often. So anyway, I just want to say congratulations, Anne, and I would encourage everybody to uh, uh, assist your uh, Safe Schools Advisory representative and uh, help make this happen and be successful. Thank you. Ms. Satterwhite. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I've attended several back to school nights. We've wrapped up our elementary back to school nights. It's a pleasure to see so many students and parents out for back to school. Um, my board brief for October was out and we talked about mindfulness and mental health initiatives in Prince William County Schools. And we also talked about Tyler Elementary School celebrating their 50th anniversary coming up. But Tyler has started the mi a mindfulness initiative and several other elementary schools have picked up on that. So talking about mental health, perfect. Um, lead up, Mr. Trenum. And uh, so talking about mental health, with the Mindfulness Initiative at Tyler Elementary School, they've seen a significant reduction in the number of referrals to their office. And so this is something that helping our students with basically this coping skills, how to reduce anxiety levels, how to get your focus back in the classroom, they're seeing a great impact on their academics in the classroom because they have the reduction of the referrals. So I want to thank Tyler Elementary School and all of our schools that are working on those efforts uh, for our students. Last night, I had the privilege of attending, along with Ms. Jarson Hart, the Rachel's Challenge event at Grand Park Middle School. And I want to thank the principal, Maria Ramadine, for inviting us and the guidance department staff for all of their work in putting on the, um, the event. Um, they partnered with NBC4, Apple Federal Credit Union, the Grand Park Middle School PTSO, and the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, Prince William County Chapter. It was, we went to the parent presentation last night. It was a phenomenal event. There were a lot of parents there. 
And as always with the Rachel's Challenge presentation, everyone was very moved. And uh, Grand Park Middle School is well on the way to a chain reaction of kindness. I want to thank everybody involved for making that event happen. Uh, this is October is National Bullying Prevention Month. And so as you're um, thinking about that, um, think about kindness. Kindness is the opposite of bullying. So we want to focus on that chain reaction of kindness that's gotten started with Rachel's Challenge at Grand Park and in many of our schools around the county. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Um, well, we're, um, it might even be, is it daylight still? I'll tell them. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Jessie. Okay, I thought we were like a record. We can't be perfect all the time, right? Uh, <laughs> good evening. Uh, first of all, I want to, um, I think I was a little remiss um, during the positively, the positive Prince William, um, and, and I'm belated, but I really wanted to say to those young people at Coles Elementary, I was very, very impressed. I think we were moving along so quickly that we, when people come up to this microphone and they talk about some of the things that they're doing, uh, they're, they want a response from us. And I, I don't know, we just got involved in other things, but I was very impressed. And I have been more than impressed with what Sparks has been able to do this year. I went to Woodbridge High School, uh, went to the football game, and of course, Lori's team won, as she said. Uh, but I also went to their athletic Hall of Fame, and they have done this for 12 years, and they give out plaques, and I don't want to list all the names, but there was a uh, Logan Farrar, I think his name is, and he is uh, now a professional ball player, baseball player, and has won numerous awards. The most impressive, the most impressive uh, item on the list is that he comes back during the off season, and he substitute teachers at Woodbridge High. And that just says a lot about him. Last week I had some slides that I wanted to put up and I just, I think I'll be within my three minutes. Could we put the slides up for me? Uh, many of us know um, Sedalia Letbetter and Johnny Letbetter. They are former teachers and they're retired and they are not here tonight because they, on Monday, they became grandparents to twins and could not be here. But this is their son, Quincy Ledbetter, and he's a graduate of Garfield High School, 1998. And he is an award-winning filmmaker and has won an award to develop a film and a million-dollar film and he is from our area. The next slide I want to show, to show you is that these are the Let Better children. They all attended Woodbridge, I mean, all attended Prince William High School. Johnny Ledbetter, the father of the twins, uh, is a nationally recognized, uh, he does video productions. And of course, Candace Ledbetter is now residing in Atlanta and she is a publicist. Next slide, please. Candace Ledbetter, believe it or not, will be the publicist for her brother's film. And I just wanted to, to recognize the talent and, that we have produced in Prince William County. And here's a family that have devoted their lives to this system. In fact, Ms. Ledbetter is the education representative for the NAACP and is still working with us. So congratulations to the Ledbetter family on the birth of the twins and for raising these phenomenal children in their home. Thank you. And that ends mine. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. Um, good. So um, I got a chance to go to the Eastern uh, Prince William County College Fair that was at Potomac High School. It was fantastic. Well attended in that rainstorm. Unfortunate um, about the rainstorm, but it was great, well attended, and it was um, like to thank all the colleges and universities that came down for it. Love to see more of them next year. 
the you know just as as I'm learning to do this job and and spending some time here, I I spend each week trying to learn a new topic. Things that I've worked on over the last few, few couple weeks have been student disciplinary issues and how we how how we're doing with suspensions and things like that. Issues of sustainability. I have a number of folks reaching out to me about the importance of sustainability and trying to improve our sustainability issues here in the school system. Another issue I'm looking at. And then, you know, obviously just always trying to address overcrowding and budget priorities. So I want to thank everyone for uh, a great school board meeting, continued um, working on our policies to make things more efficient. And I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Meeting adjourned.